Okay, good to be back, good to be back in the Gospel of Matthew as we're working our way through the entire New Testament chronologically. And uh, we just, just finished last time in Matthew 11, verse number 30. Jesus said, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. There's one little phrase though in that section that I just wanted to touch on briefly, just because I don't wanna be negligent in overlooking something that I think is uh, important. Okay, and that is a little phrase found in verse number 29 when Jesus admonishes those who are weary and heavy laden to come to him and so forth uh, and, and take his yoke upon them and learn of him. He says, for I am gentle and humble in heart. Okay, so that's something about Jesus that I think we just need to ponder for a moment here before we uh, move on in Matthew. Um, Jesus is becomes our master, but he's not like a task master. He's not, uh, you know, a distant, distant guy who sits in the upper office who gives his dictums and shoots out his emails and, you know, you're just a little underling. No, uh, uh, Jesus, you know, it comes down to our level, doesn't he? I mean, he shows his great humility in becoming a man. He, we, we saw him, you know, wash people's feet, the, the very disciples that he was going to send out and so forth. And so Jesus said, the greatest among us must become the servant of all. And, and he, he demonstrated that, didn't he? he? He was the greatest of all. He was the greatest servant of all. Uh, so it's hard for us, and I understand why. It's hard for me to understand Jesus getting in front of us. Oh my goodness, it almost seems like sacrilege to think of Jesus being in front of me, kneeling before me and washing my feet. I think I'd be like Peter. Never, never, no, 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 no. Something's wrong with this picture, Jesus. You know, let me get down. I want to get on the floor and 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 you know prostrate before you. Uh and, and it's just a mind-boggling fact that Jesus came down to level and he, he, he just loves us and he, he wants to serve us and, and he's not gonna you know crack the whip on us up. He's very gentle when we mess up. He, he's not really right there to say, okay, I'm, okay, now I'm gonna yank the noose that I ran and I'll, that's enough of that. No, he, he just patient, long-suffering, merciful, humble, gentle. His commandments are not burdensome. Ah, ah, he's just great. He's just great, okay? So praise his holy name. Let's move on to Matthew chapter 12 now. And uh, this begins a section. There's no doubt that Matthew, as he wrote this, it was very strategic. He put two stories together that are kind of similar here about Jesus making the Pharisees mad because he wasn't keeping their law, although he was certainly keeping God's law, which was his law. And he's trying to teach his readers something here about what's important to God. Okay, so we're going to look for these truths in Matthew chapter 12. Um, let's read verse number one. At that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath, and his disciples became hungry and began to pick the heads of grain and eat. Next part. Verse 2, but when the Pharisees saw this, they said to him, look, your disciples do what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. And so, you know, they're confronting Jesus about his disciples. He should have better control over them. You're supposed to be teaching them the laws, and they're doing what's against the law. Well, let's just, you know, understand here, they're not breaking any of God's laws. And Jesus is about to make that very clear. Uh, and I think if you were to ask the, the guys who, who are questioning Jesus on that, the Pharisees, they would have had to admit that too. Because we have, they had, the law of Moses. You call it what you want to call it. The, you know, the Ten Commandments plus all the rest of the law, the Mosaic law, the law of Moses. There's about 600 or so commandments that God gave to the people of Israel that they're supposed to follow and obey. Well, you know, the Jews had a history of not keeping the law. And by the time Jesus' time came around, they knew their history. I mean, you, you know, our people tend to stray. And uh, when they tend to stray, they get in trouble, and pretty soon they're enslaved to foreign lands and they're deported and so forth. And so we got to figure out a way, for crying out loud, to get these people not to disobey. Yeah, you know, a lot of pastors. <laughs> <laughs> I was there one time. How do we get these doggone people? Jesus, your sheep aren't obeying me, you know, and, and they're not, do, they don't want to do what you say. And, and the Pharisees, you know, made the same mistake many of us make. They think if we can just create more laws, and that's what the Pharisees did. They said, okay, here's the law that God gave, and, and if we can keep people real far away from ever getting close 
to transgressing that law. They'll never transgress this law. So we'll get a bunch of other laws. We'll, they call them actually the fence laws. That is, we build a fence over here, we build a fence over here on either side, and, and if, if people don't cross the fence, there's no possibility of them breaking the commandment. You got fences all around, it protects the commandment, it keeps people holy. Okay, now, uh, what should I say next? What's the most important thing to say about this? I want to say so many things. Well, here's one thing I want to say, and that is the solution to getting people to obey God is not creating more laws and creating you know, little fences to keep them further and further. Because people, sinful people find, find ways to, to do what they want to do. They'll find an excuse, and the Pharisees themselves were like the, the ultimate proof of that. All the loopholes they had found in God's laws, even though they had put up all these fence laws, they're just uh, lustful, uh, frequently divorcing, uh, lying, cheating type guys, yet they're the guys that have all these laws, not just 600, thousands of fence laws. And, and if you ever read them, they just border on the absurd. We'll maybe talk about some of them. Okay, so um, the, the, the way to get people to be holy is to change their hearts. See, because then they want to obey God. They want to do His will. They're just, you know, in love with him, and they just want to please him, just like, just like a child wants to please its parents. If you want a child to really be obedient, the best place to work is right in the heart. Get to that kid's heart so he wants to obey you, and then you're not always having to say, here's what I, I told you, don't you remember? Put these big lists of things up on the wall. Look at every morning, read this list. This is the things you must do. No, no, no. Get them so they love, that, love you, you know, love them, and uh, it's a better way to motivate people to do what you want them to do. And God is, you know, at least that smart, okay? So, so uh, here's the point. The, 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 these guys, the disciples, eating these grains of wheat, they're not breaking God's law, they're breaking the fence laws, okay? And I cannot wait to talk about that next. So I will see you next time.